Today's devotional comes from Matthew 27, verses 24 to 26. As today is Good Friday, we are recounting the events leading up to and including Jesus' crucifixion. Now, the Gospel writers give us great clarity and unity in recounting those events, though each writer provides his own emphasis of certain details. And while it's not explicit in their accounts, there is definitely a gross miscarriage of justice that is happening by both the Jewish and Roman authorities. And while the Romans had a very well-developed legal system, a system that greatly influences our own legal system to this day, Jesus' trials were anything but fair or impartial. In the truest sense, it was a mock trial. Now, as a top Roman official in Jerusalem, Pilate tried to be impartial. He gave Jesus every opportunity to defend himself, yet Jesus refused. In Pilate's mind, there didn't seem to be enough evidence to convict Jesus of a crime, much less a capital crime. And yet Jesus' accusers persisted, and the crowds grew restless. And we read in Matthew 27, beginning in verse 24. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Now Pilate was in a difficult spot. He was charged to uphold the purity of the Roman law as well as keep the peace of the city. Yet because of Jesus, one must be sacrificed for the other. Letting one man die versus losing control of the city and possibly his own life seemed to be the only way out of the situation. The act of Pilate washing his hands was meant to signify to the gods, to himself, to the crowds, that he was justified or cleansed of any wrongdoing. He couldn't be held accountable for his actions. He would be innocent of Jesus' blood. And yet Pilate was guilty, just as guilty as if he had pronounced Jesus guilty. For we may wash our hands of guilt, but we cannot wash our heart of it. It is an eternal stain that only the blood of Christ can wash away. Far too often we are more like Pilate than we realize. We try to absolve ourselves of sins we commit and righteousness we withhold. We tend to blame others for our sin. If she hadn't spoken so harshly, I wouldn't have fill in the blank. If he wouldn't have, if he would have minded his own business, I wouldn't have fill in the blank. If they would just do their job, I wouldn't have fill in the blank. Or sometimes we don't blame others for our sin. We minimize our sin. We downplay it. We try to relativize it and make it seem not so bad. We say, at least it was a white lie and not a full-blown lie. Or we make excuses for our sin. Well, I was just born this way. Or that's the way I was raised. Or that's just my personality. When we treat our sin like this, we are in essence trying to wash our hands of guilt like Pilate. We are saying to God, to others, to ourselves, that I'm not really the sinner you think that I am. When we do this, We are saying that we don't need Jesus. We don't need his blood to be on us. We don't need the cross. You see, if there's no sin, there's no need for the cross. But Jesus did come, as Paul reminds us, because in Romans 3, there is no one righteous. No, not one. That means we all need the cross. And what's more, we all need to call our sin what it is. Sin. And as we confess it and repent of it, the cross grows bigger in our life. And the bigger the cross, the easier it is to see our sin and confess and repent of it. I pray this will continue to be true in my life and in yours. Let's pray. Oh, Father, on this Good Friday, we do remember the death of our Lord Jesus. And we do ask that you would forgive us for the times that we have minimized our sin or blamed someone else for it or made excuses for it and thus denying the necessity of Jesus dying on the cross. Would the cross become bigger and bigger in our life so that we would find it easier and easier to repent of our sin 
and to enjoy the assurance of your pardoning grace that comes to us and the fellowship that we enjoy. For we pray this in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Well, may this Good Friday be a good one as you recognize and give thanks for Christ's sacrifice on the cross for your sins and mine. May the cross grow ever bigger in our lives that we may live in its light instead of the darkness of our sin. God bless you, dear family of God, until we meet again.